Hello, and welcome to our virtual poster for the 2021 Jack C. Educational Conference. My name is Emma Saito Lincoln, and I'm the Legacy Center Director for the Japanese American Service Committee in Chicago. In 2018, the JASC Legacy Center and the Chicago Japanese American Historical Society embarked on a collaborative project funded by an NPS JAX grant. Today, we'll be sharing some of the outcomes of that project, which was a multi-pronged effort to expand our oral history collections, improve access to those collections, and build new educational resources that capitalize on the power of the spoken word and first-person narratives. The first part of the project involved gathering and improving access to our oral history collections. This included digitizing content that already existed but was trapped on obsolete media, such as 8mm and 16mm film, magnetic audio tape, and mini DV videotape. We also recorded new interviews with 40 community members whose families were impacted by incarceration. We transcribed a substantial portion of the collections and made many of the recordings and their accompanying transcripts publicly available online. The work of recording new interviews ground to a halt when the COVID-19 pandemic began in early 2020. However, with an extension on the grant period and some retooling of our technological approach, we resumed recording in early 2021 and were able to reach our goal. Some of the necessary adaptations included recording remotely via Zoom and adjusting our physical spacing, equipment, and protocols for in-person interviews. Transcription was accomplished through a combination of paid and volunteer labor and the AI-powered transcription service REV. The ultimate goal of public access was accomplished through two routes. First, a subset of recordings and transcripts was sent to the Densho Digital Repository, where they are discoverable alongside thousands of other materials that collectively preserve our community's history. Second, the JASC Legacy Center built a new platform to showcase our own digital collections. Using the open source content management system Omika and the free oral history metadata synchronizer tools and plugins developed by the University of Kentucky, we now provide full text searchability across the collection and within each interview transcript, enhancing access and usability of these powerful stories. The work to populate our online oral history collection is ongoing, and we also intend to add other types of digital materials to our Omika instance over time. The second part of the project focused on education and outreach, and I'll hand things over to digital producer Catherine Nagasawa and Chicago Japanese American Historical Society President Jean Mishima to describe their work. So building off of the interviews conducted for the Oral History Project, I produced two interactive educational websites about Midwest Japanese American history. The first is called Uprooted, and it follows three Japanese American families from the West Coast to the incarceration camps and eventually to Chicago, where they resettled after the war. Uprooted takes a multi-generational storytelling approach, so while it focuses primarily on the family member who directly experienced incarceration, it also features interviews with that person's kids and grandkids to really trace the effects of incarceration and resettlement on subsequent generations. Uprooted also takes an innovative approach to classroom use because it allows students and teachers to choose whose story they like to follow, and each story focuses on a different key historical theme. So Kazuo Ideno's story highlights the war relocation authorities, resettlement and assimilation project for Japanese Americans in the Midwest. Uh, Chiyoko Omachi's story focuses on civil liberties, redress, and current activism within the Japanese American community. And Minoru Imamura's story focuses on the loyalty questionnaire and Japanese American military service during World War II. Um, and each of these stories also include additional primary resources and discussion questions related to those themes. The second exhibit I produced is called Reckoning, and it follows the Chicago Japanese American community's role in the movement for redress and reparations in the 1970s and 80s, really starting with the JACL convention in Chicago in 1970, when the first concept for redress was proposed, all the way to the involvement of Chicago Japanese Americans today in pushing for various forms of racial justice, as well as reparations for African Americans to address the legacies of slavery. 
Both of these exhibits feature archival photos and documents, video interviews with Chicago Japanese Americans, as well as custom illustrations by Chicago Japanese American artist Cory Nakamura Lin,、uh, with web design and development by Paula Friedrich. In addition to the two web exhibits, a broader curriculum was developed by the Chicago Japanese American Historical Society to provide important historical context. Developed by educators for educators, the curriculum was written by Jean Mishima and Marlin Nishimura, and was introduced to middle and high school teachers during two teacher training workshops held virtually in April 2021. This curriculum is basically about the discrimination, the anti、uh, campaign against the Japanese before World War II, which led up to the uh, uh, the internment, the jargon of those days. Your、uh, relocation internment camps are now called the American concentration camp. We talked about the life in the camps, the ten camp under the WRA, the War Re-、uh, Relocation Authority, and to the resettlement period, and how the racism today, how some of this is relevant to what's happening to today's to the immigrants,、um, except they use different you know terminologies from then. I think it's very important to include today's context because. My question is, what have we learned from all these matter of fact that we present in these presentations, your books, your movies, and so forth? We have detention centers now, and families are being separated. I mean, there's so many similarities to what happened,、um, you know, in the 1940s or even before. The two teachers workshop. The one great advantage I found out, we were able to reach teachers from the East Coast to the West Coast. If we just had it in person, we would just try to attract teachers in the Chicago land area. You know, so that was one great advantage. As you can see, this project had a lot of moving parts and was a genuine collaboration, drawing on the talents of many people. Looking forward, the JASC Legacy Center is already busy working on our next JAX funded project. We're planning an internship program to be offered next summer, during which we hope to inspire a new generation and equip them with the archival research skills and media production skills necessary to create compelling audio and video narratives inspired by the materials in our stacks.